Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, apologies for being absent for a bit of time. Um, if you read the monthly newsletter, you'll know why that is. Um, if you don't read the monthly newsletter, then I'll leave a link below if you want to sign up. I'm working in Stirling today. So I rather foolishly thought I'd come up five hours early for sunrise. So it's just after four o'clock and I'm at the River Devon. So I'm going to spend a bit of time, see if we can get a, a nice sunrise down at the riverside. So uh, let's go. If there's a shot there. You've got these beautiful, <laughs> I have no idea what they are, purple things and all these uh, white ones. That old uh, dead looking tree. And then beyond, on the ochles, you've got some uh, gorse, which has got that lovely yellow colour, so it's quite a nice contrasty scene. Right, I've taken this shot. Basically, this tree here, that kind of dead looking tree, that carpet of wild flowers, and then the gorse covered hills in the background. I've included a little bit of the River Devon, just because of that reflection really, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that's the first shot in the bag. I might actually take a close up as well, that makes more of those flowers, because those flowers and those kind of dead looking trees in the background are actually very, very nice. Yeah, the sun is now just climbing over the end of the Oakle Ridge there, which is giving us some beautiful golden light back the way I came. And just on this side, this scene's starting to wake up as well. We're starting to get some light quite low down on the trees now. And it's only a matter of time before I think before we get some light coming right along the riverside and hitting the, the bank. I think this scene here might be a silhouette because the sky is just so overpowering. But I do like the reflections and if I can bracket the exposure just a little bit I might be able to pick out some of those flowers and, uh, and bring them back into the image. But that's beautiful isn't it? I think it's a matter of seconds before the sun rises over those trees and we get some the first direct light. I said, you know what, I'm going to run back along this way and get that tree with that bank of flowers because I think if the sun hits them, that's going to really pop. That's going to look absolutely incredible. Yeah, quick change of position. And there we go. We have the sun just cresting over those, hill, those trees. Now, I think if I can get close enough, I can hide the sun behind that larger tree there. Yeah, just like that. And that allows me to shoot those flowers in that tree.
Right, I'm going to talk you through this one. I kind of like this scene. You've got like, a little culverted stream there joining the main river. These beautiful blossoms on the tree. Backlit trees behind, which are catching the light. But these ones aren't, although that one is just starting to pick up some light now. And this old dead branch in the water. And all in that makes for a lovely scene. What I've done is I've focused on the dead branch in the water. Um, as always, having to do a couple of brackets because the background is very bright and the foreground is very dark. But that looks like it's got a lot of potential to be quite a nice, quite a nice scene. There's a lot of uh, debris here which I'm trying to avoid in the shot, so I'm kind of cropping from about there to there. But again, it looks all right in the back of the camera. I'm, I've zoomed out quite a bit, so I'm including a lot of sky, but I think I'll probably crop most of that in post-processing. I'm just doing that so that I can include the top of this tree and as much of this beautiful reflection as possible. But yeah beautiful yeah and look we're just getting some direct light on the side of this tree here now so that is beautiful absolutely gorgeous just taking out a couple of shots I've taken this shot, <clears throat> basically still shooting those trees, but obviously I've lost the river now because I've taken a step back. But what I am doing is uh, <clears throat> focusing on these foreground flowers and using them as a kind of leading light to take you up to those, those trees which are just starting to catch the light now. I'll take this shot just now and then I'm going to move forward again towards the river and see if it's possible to get a composition where I include those trees and some of these flowers and the river. <laughs> that would be the ideal shot, but I'll take this for now. Right, I've come down to the water. Oh, I wonder if I caught that and a fish just jumped right there. Yeah, I've come down to the water, basically just so I can get a close up of that fallen branch and these trees with the blossoms and obviously the beautiful reflection. I'm still, I've still got the 16 to 35 millimeter on just now. I'm kind of liking this, you've got the, the light breaking through the trees there and also the reflection of that light breaking through the trees, so that looks quite a nice shot actually. I might quickly grab that while I can. Yeah, I grabbed that shot. I just realised, I think that's a bench over there. Uh, how nice would it be if somebody came along and sat in there? Because you'd have the reflection in the, the in the water and also the silhouette of the person. I quite like that, that's, that's very nice. Where are all the people when you need them eh?
I'm wondering if there's a shot with these as foreground interest leading up to those trees there. My problem is there's no real way to get down there. That's about a five, six foot drop <laughs> straight down and the wall looks pretty deep and all. I'll see if there's a better vantage point along here where I might be able to include those even if it involves getting a telephoto on. You know, something like that, although they don't look quite so dramatic now, do they? That's nice, nice reflection with those reeds. Right, I'm going to head back to that um, field of wildflowers with that tree and see if we can grab some fully lit images now and then I'll continue on to the other side of the, the uh, bridge and we'll see what we can get there. Okay, I'm at this tree now. Pretty much shooting with it front and centre, pretty much like that. I am using the 70 to 300 millimeter lens though, so it's not quite as wide as as you can see here. Right, um, I'm shooting this scene just now, which was the one I was shooting earlier, only we didn't have any direct light. So that is beautiful in itself, well, I really like that, but the light underneath the bridge there, look at that. I'm going to head over there soon, but first, this is just absolutely beautiful now. And I don't know if they're swifts or swallows, but we've got a lot of, a lot of birds flying around there. I just try to find a good angle so that I can include this foreground tree, those background trees, and that carpet of flowers, and also just a little bit of the oakles, and ideally there's reflection. So I'm not asking for much, just everything in the one shot. Ah, oh, beautiful. Right, I'm going to nick over to the other side of the bridge uh, a little bit further upstream because I know there are some beautiful pools and um, a couple of another, uh, another few um, kind of S bends and stuff like that in the river. So I'm going to head up that way, see how the light is up there. The sun's rising so the light's becoming quite harsh now. So I might not actually be able to get anything, but uh, I'd kick myself if I miss something. So. Okay, right. I've come over the other side of the bridge now and already I'm thinking, hmm, I think I've come here at the wrong time. There's some potential. I like this, this old tree here that's kind of leaning out over the water and it does seem to be, well you've got some nice reflections there and there's some 
It's a lovely old uh, bend here, just at the side. Just here. They may have a bit of potential. There's some nice um, purple flowers here. Let me just show you that. I quite like these purple flowers on that bush there. I don't know if it's possible to get a shot with them. It has foreground interest and then that tree. Actually, I suspect it's probably not going to be possible, but we'll give it a go. Right, what do I know? It is possible. <laughs> I just had to get away down low. Um, I'm pretty much crouching. But this way I can include these uh, these little purple flowers as a foreground and then the, the tree and its reflection in the back. And uh, yeah, it looks alright actually. It looks quite nice. Probably turn it just a little bit to the side here like that. To make it more of a kind of 50-50 split between the trees and the, the trees and the flowers. But yeah, it's nice, I like, that. I like that. And you've got just that little reflection of the sky there, which again kind of gives you a bit of separation between the, the flowers and the tree in the background. If you read this month's newsletter, and if not, why not? But if you did, you'll have seen that I had my first attempt at macro photography. You'd have seen the results of that. Um, I'm wondering if I should have another go. Because these, these blue and red flowers are... No idea where they are, but they are beautiful. I've just noticed all these uh, little birds coming and going in those holes in the riverbank. I'm wondering if I could get my telephoto lens out and see if I can grab a shot or two. If I'm doing wildlife photography as well as uh, in macro now, push the boat out.
So that's it for another video, hope you enjoyed. Landscape, macro and wildlife in the one video. Spoiling you. It, you'd be crazy not to subscribe. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Give us a little thumbs up if you did. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, bye.